Hello and welcome to today's webcast, 2020 Vision Achieve IIoT Network Visibility. We're excited to announce some new product releases throughout the presentation today, so uh, we hope you'll stick around to hear about them and tell us what you think. My name is Robert Landavazo, and I'm an industrial security sales engineer at Tripwire, and I've been an OT cybersecurity practitioner for more than seven years with an experience in IT security throughout my 16-year career. I've had the pleasure of uh, today being joined by two other industry experts, and I've been lucky enough to work very closely with Mr. Gary Neeland, who is based in Seattle, Washington, over the past several years. Uh, Gary is a technical director at Clarity and has a background in nuclear cybersecurity. Kian La is joining us from Belden in Singapore, and I can never keep up with the time difference, so I'll just greet her today by saying good morning, good evening, and good night all at once. Uh, Hien is an associate product manager with Belden, responsible for some fantastic products coming to market soon that she will give us some details about later. Uh, she has more than four years uh, of work experience in product and sales related roles. So I'll just take a few minutes to review the agenda. Uh, Gary is going to kick us off with a brief introduction to the challenges at hand uh, by defining some terminology and contrasting IT versus OT security posture and exposure over time issues, which I think is very insightful with regard to actualizing the situations that the industry has caught itself into, so to speak. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Gary sharing uh, several real-world use cases for our technology offering across several industrial verticals. Uh, we'll then move on and I'll share uh, our storied history that brought uh, our three organizations together and introduce Tripwire Industrial Visibility to those of you that aren't familiar with it, uh, which will hopefully be a good transition to discussing a new release of that software coming very soon. And lastly, I'll turn it over to Hien for more details on our big announcement. Uh, please feel free to submit your questions throughout the presentation, and we will field them at the end if the, present, uh, if the presentation, if time allows, or uh, get back to you individually. So once again, thanks for spending some of your day with us. Uh, Gary, the floor is yours. Hi, thanks, Robert. I'd like to uh, talk today about the uh, challenge at hand, some of the unique issues that we have in this OT space, some of the unique security challenges that we have to worry about because we're dealing with uh, something different than the IT environment, and what that means why we have to tackle this with a little bit of a different security solution, why we have to tackle this with a little bit of uh, 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 a different plan, and then go into some of that and why we need to care about this. So I want to start today and talk a little bit about the Industrial Internet of Things. Everybody loves acronyms, so let's go ahead and start and uh, go into what this IIoT, you may have heard of IoT, you may have heard of IoT, but what does that actually mean? So this is where we're actually talking about uh, things on plant floors. So these are things in the operational technology environment. These are the things that actually control processes. Uh, they actually control functions within a plant environment. And this is the new area that we're actually focusing in for, from a security point of view. So we have a bunch of, again, a bunch of different acronyms here. We have things like ICS for industrial control system. We have SCADA for uh, 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 monitoring systems. And what we have to care about these, why we need to worry about these sort of systems is because these are the actual uh, critical systems that run our plant environment. So if we look at any of your guys' environments that are actually producing things that are actually uh, uh, you know, these, these are the environments that are actually uh, producing the equipment that our companies uh, need. These are the critical networks that are, are working on these. And the idea here is that we want to reduce the risk and we want to uh, focus on the security for these environments. This is the space that we care about. It's much different than the IT environment and these are the things that we need to start focusing on from a security point of view. So we know IoT is a little bit different, but what actually makes it different? So if we look at the, you know, the areas that a lot of you guys are probably familiar with, if we look at the IT area, security has been a thing in that area for a very long time. Uh, you know, if, if I ask any single one of you about how to go secure a single corporate network or an IT environment, 
Uh, there are many different tools, there are many different uh, solutions that we can have, and it is something that is very well understood. So we've had a lot of time to uh, explore how to do security in these environments, which has reduced our risk and reduced our exposure uh, to attacks in this environment. But if we go ahead and look at that OT environment, that operational technology environment, Security is a very new word. It is something that we have just started on very recently. You know, in the last few years, it's something that we started working on. So the exposure is much, much more. It is something that we haven't started dealing with, that we haven't effectively started tackling. And it is something that uh, has this unique uh, issue because uh, security is kind of a new word for all of our uh, OT folks. So it's something where we've just started down the path of doing security in these environments, and it leaves us with a lot of exposure to cyber risk. So when we look at these OT environments, we actually have uh, a, a very unique cross-section where we have to worry about a lot of different things. You know, we have a lot of different security risks that we have to deal with, and it is something that we haven't started tackling yet. So it's a very new environment for a lot of folks. And a lot of the issues that lead to this are things like the fact that a lot of this equipment is legacy. We have uh, increased connectivity. So in the past, we didn't have to worry about this security because uh, these environments were truly air-gapped or they were analog systems and we didn't have to worry about uh, people getting into them. But nowadays, it is, it is connected. It's getting increasingly connected. It is something that has uh, increasing issues that we have to worry about. And there is an active threat landscape about this uh, sort of environment that I'll talk to in a bit. And this is something that we have to start uh, tackling. We have to start worrying about this because there is an increased risk and there is an increased uh, avenue for attackers to actually come in there and exercise this risk. So one of these examples of how we're actually seeing attackers actually exercise this environment is NotPetya. So this wasn't something that was targeted. This was something that just had what we call a spillover effect into the OT environment. So this was a ransomware campaign that was targeting IT environments and things like that. But this moved over into the OT environment because of this increased connectivity, because we had uh, shop floors that were connected to IT networks, because we had a number of different things that allowed this sort of uh, attack to propagate over to our, our plant floor environments. And there were huge financial costs to this. You know, we saw just from public financial disclosures, we saw major companies that were having huge uh, disruptions to their production lines, which cost real money. This is the big difference between the OT and the IT network. Once we have one of these things uh, compromise our OT network, we're no longer producing our equipment. We're no longer producing the things that our company needs to build to actually make money. So that's the other key unique differentiator between the OT security and the IT security is the reason we need to protect these OT environments is this is the thing that actually makes our company's money at the end of the day. So keeping these plants running, keeping these environments going is a very key thing for all of these companies. And uh, what we've seen is that uh, more and more and more, even issues that aren't particularly targeting the OT environment can have the ability to cause a huge financial impact and a huge disruption to production for these companies. So on the other side of the house, even though we've started to see more non-targeted attacks impacting our OT environment, we've also started to see targeted attacks in this environment. So this is where we have advanced, very, uh, very uh, instructed attackers that are actually targeting the OT environment and trying to go directly at these assets. And a great example of this, or you know, not great for the people that had to deal with it, but a great example of an attacker that uh, impacted this thing is uh, the Triton malware. So if you guys are familiar with Triconic system, that is a, uh, a safety, a primarily safety control system that's uh, by Schneider Electric. And the Triton malware is something that was highly targeted and was targeting these environments directly. And this was a very advanced attack. It is something that was actually uh, changing the code on these things. It was changing the code on these controllers to cause them to change their behavior. And this is the sort of thing that we've seen that can cause incredible impacts to your production environments. It can cause your systems to stop. It can cause your, uh, uh, your production to stop. And this is the sort of the other sort of thing that we're trying to protect ourselves against. So it's not just a latent IT attack that moved its way into the OT environment. 
we're also trying to uh, uh, worry about uh, targeted attacks in this environment. We've seen many other examples of this. You know, if you guys have been around long enough to see Stuxnet or things like that, uh, those are the same type of things that are targeting the OT environment, but it is a very evolving threat landscape. So it's something that we need to uh, protect ourselves against. It's something that we need to start uh, evaluating to make sure that we're not having issues and not having things shut our plants down and, and cause us issues on our control systems. So what does this end up all meaning? So because we've started to see these attacks, and, and again, we have a, a combination of a different threat landscape, we have targeted attacks, we have just spillover from the IT environment. At the end of the day, what does this actually mean? Well, we've started to see actual boards and companies start taking notice and starting to uh, understand that they need to deal with this uh, threat, that they need to actually start doing something to protect themselves against these different types of, uh, uh, you know, this threat landscape. So we've actually seen across a lot of these very large companies, we've seen 90% of them have already started evaluating this at the board level. So it's something that companies understand that they need to start uh, evaluating, that they need to start uh, dealing with, and they need to start targeting so that they don't have to worry about disruption to their operations uh, because of a security issue. So for most of these companies, it's something that they've already started evaluating, and it is a top five priority for many of these, you know, Fortune 500 type companies, uh, because it is a very critical thing. You know, if we do have one of these issues, whether it be a, a you know, random IT attack that moves over into the OT environment, or a targeted OT attack that's actually uh, specifically trying to take down that environment, at the end of the day, all of this means that you are taking out your operational system. So for, for the vast majority of these companies, if you're trying to produce something or you're trying to uh, 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 run something in your plants, these are the things that we need to keep running. These are the keys to the kingdom that we need to keep going uh, so that we can continue generating revenue and uh, keeping these uh, uh, companies going. Thanks for that, Gary. And you know what really strikes me as concerning is that on your timeline, you know, we, we see the obvious maturity of IT cybersecurity uh, being much further along than uh, OT. And we're thinking, I'm thinking immediately of you know exchange and email and instant messaging and point of sale systems. Uh, but when we start thinking about attacks like Triton that affect uh, safety instrumentation systems and lives are on the line, that's a, a whole new world. Uh, would you agree? Yes, definitely. Yeah, there's a very unique threat landscape and it. The impact and the, uh, the uh, chance of something happening and once something does get impacted, what that actually means is very different within the OT environment. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about here and go into a little bit more detail was on some of these real use cases, on what we've seen from our customers, what we've seen from uh, folks in this environment, and uh, you know what the real impact is. What we have to worry about if we've if we started to see this type of attack impacting an OT environment and uh, uh, impacting one of these plants. So one of the first examples I wanted to go into was for a very large oil and gas company that uh, you know is key in this OT environment. So this is someone that's producing a lot of material. They have lots of different plants in this uh, in this environment. They have very large OT footprints that they have to worry about protecting. So one of the issues that they saw, and one of the things that we've seen that is kind of unique to this environment, is they have lots of different uh, users that have access to these networks. So I talked a little bit before about how we have increased connectivity. We have uh, many more users that are getting in. And a lot of this comes from the fact that we want to get data off these networks. So in this case, they had PLC data. They had things like flow meters and things that were sending out information that's important for the business. But they had many different users that gained access to these networks. So because uh, they wanted to give this data out to a wide variety of users, they had lots of different access from a variety of different partners, from a variety of different users. And this increased the uh, attack avenue that they had into this environment dramatically because now all of these different holes that they put in their firewalls to gain access for these variety of different users is another place for somebody to come and uh, uh, potentially attack this environment. All these are different uh, attack pathways for someone to come in and start doing something. 
And the other issue that they had is the way that they were actually coming into this environment was totally unsecured. So they were basically, you know, giving people access to jump posts and, and open VPN clients and things like that. And that just gave them free reign once they got into this environment to, uh, to come on. And they had no control over what they were doing, what was actually going on, and uh, how they were interacting with their OT environment. So this was one thing that after they identified this risk, after they identified that this was something that, need, that they needed to start uh, concerning themselves with, they added a whole layer of security and added a complete monitoring suite so that they could actually see what was going on. So this is one of the big things that we've seen with the OT environment. It's not just about securing the environment itself. It's about securing the, uh, the access points into that environment. That is your most common pathway for someone to use to actually impact this. And we want to make sure that anybody that is utilizing it, anybody that is on this, is both approved and then audited and monitored while they are using uh, this environment, uh, actually you know, using your OT, your OT equipment. So this is one great example where they identified the risk. They, you know, they had this uh, unique case where they needed, to, they needed to have these users in there so that they could uh, do the business function of giving this data out. But they wanted to give more control and, and uh, uh, wrap their arms around that uh, monitoring piece so that they could actually effectively secure this, uh, secure this OT network. So the next example here that I wanted to talk about was about insufficient visibility. And this is for a power and uh, uh, it was a, a, a company that had access to both power, water, and wastewater facilities for a, a very large municipality. And insufficient visibility is something that we see all over the place. So if this sounds the same to some of you folks, you know, don't feel bad. This is something we see across a lot of different spaces and uh, a lot of different customers in this environment. And uh, the big takeaway here is that they have a wide variety of equipment. They have lots of equipment across a very large physical footprint. And they didn't necessarily know what was on these networks. So they had uh, a very extended network that targeted uh, you know, substations, lifting stations, uh, water treatment facilities all across this uh, entire city. And their initial problem was they didn't actually know what was on these uh, networks. They didn't know what equipment was there, what contractors put stuff on these environments, and what they actually had to protect. And uh, in my mind, that is the very first step that we see a lot of customers take, because if you don't know something exists, you're not going to be able to perform effective security on it. So this is where they came along, and they actually added an industrial monitoring solution onto this network so that they could identify what was out there and start securing this environment. So before they were able to do that, they weren't able to see all of their PLCs, all of their OT equipment, and especially all of their uh, uh, you know, contractor equipment, third-party equipment in that environment. So once they identified this as a key risk, they identified as a key risk, and then they started uh, adding on a system here so that they could start uh, uh, tackling this risk. They wanted to have something on there so that they could identify what existed and start applying effective security to the various systems that they see within this environment. And this last example that I wanted to talk about was just about uh, discovery and security monitoring. So this was a very large multinational electric utility. And one of their big challenges was very similar to the last few, where they have basically a black box that they have to target. They didn't necessarily know what was on their networks. They did not understand, uh, have a good feeling for what was on these environments. And that was for a variety of reasons, both that they didn't control the OT networks over time as they were uh, digitizing it and bringing it into more modern technologies. And they had a large number of acquisitions. So they would buy other utilities and buy other uh, companies. And then they would all of a sudden inherit an asset, and you know maybe they don't have great drawings, maybe they don't have great information. And they have to start handling this uh, on their own. So this led to a very unique use case where they uh, needed to uh, understand what existed on their own environments and uh, uh, figure out what they can do with it. So in this case, they actually started uh, adding on a monitoring solution to it, and they had a lot of unforeseen benefits immediately after uh, they started doing uh, that, after they started their monitoring project. So a couple of the key things that they were able to do is that they were able to actually identify what existed within these environments and see what was going on between these different assets. 
And ultimately, what it allowed them to do was have a faster response time and improved uptime of what was going on, and they were able to respond effectively and quickly if they had some sort of risk or some sort of event going on because they actually had the information. So it basically shined a light on that black box. It gave them all the detail that they needed to uh, understand the risk that they had, understand the uh, 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 cyber vulnerability that they had. And then if they did have something that was impacting this environment, if they did have something that was uh, you know, going in and exercising one of these risks, it gave them the tools to actually effectively respond and uh, uh, continue to operate their plants at a, a lower total cost of ownership because they uh, understood what was going on and they were able to effectively respond to this sort of thing. Okay, and with that, I hope that I've given you a little bit of idea on kind of some of the unique issues that we have in this environment and some of the real use cases that we've seen from different customers on why we need to care about this. You know, why is OT security different? Why is the challenge unique? And uh, what we need to worry about. So I'm going to kick it back over to Robert here and have him talk a little bit about the Belden Tripwire and Clarity uh, uh, offering here. Thanks so much, Gary. It's uh, really great to hear how these solutions are, are being utilized in such unique ways. Uh, and in light of recent events, I couldn't agree more that uh, it's more important than ever to ensure that all of your access controls at the edge of your network that facilitate things like remote access or any connections to the business network and outside world for that matter are properly identified, hardened, and monitored. So it's no surprise that uh, technology is constantly evolving. And for those of us that have been involved with industrial automation, whether you're employed by an asset owner or otherwise, it can be equally as frustrating to see how slow our industry verticals are to adopt emerging technology. That being said, I want to make the point that Belden, Tripwire, and Clarity are in a strong position to provide solutions no matter where your organization is on that cycle of adopting cutting-edge tech, uh, things like containerization, uh, even offloading non-real-time control workloads to the cloud, leveraging big data, uh, or even implementing uh, something like virtualization at the plant level. Ultimately, the same very foundational controls will still apply across these architectural landscapes, forcing us to ask ourselves, how do you ensure the accuracy of your asset inventory? And once an organization has reached a high level of confidence in determining what you've got stuffed away in all those cabinets, how do you go about securing it? Well, uh, once again, how did the Belden Tripwire and Clarity relationship get where it is today? Well, uh, it's been a partnership 116 years in the making. Founded well over 100 years ago in 1902, selling cable to the likes of Thomas Edison, Belden uh, has evolved quite a bit since then, to say the least. Uh, Tripwire was founded in 1997, conceived following Gene Kim's work in reaction to the Morse worm, arguably one of the very first worms uh, in the wild. Uh, Clarity was first conceived uh, in 2010 with a noble mission to secure the safety and reliability of industrial networks. Uh, Belden acquired Tripwire in 2014, a sitting puzzle piece in their broad portfolio of solutions, uh, which brings us to 2018. The strategic partnership between Tripwire, Belden, and Clarity was inked to truly realize uh, true top floor to shop floor cybersecurity solutions. Along this storied timeline are some rather interesting cybersecurity events, uh, starting in 1903. The first cyber threat uh, I'll talk about is, is somewhat uh, an ironic tale of the world's first malicious hacking of secure communications. In 1903, an Italian radio pioneer, Marconi, uh, made public the, the first demonstration of long-distance wireless communication using Morse code uh, to a rather amused audience. Uh, the live demonstration was to show that his messages could be sent in a secure fashion, but uh, the audience instead was treated to a Morse code message uh, mocking uh, Marconi and his team uh, by uh, an early adversary. Um, I suspect uh, the 
audience is probably more versed about these other 15 plus ICS uh, specific cyber incidents, uh, campaigns, and exploits. So instead of rehashing the details about each of them individually, the intent of this graphic is to highlight to you that activities by threat actors against critical infrastructure and uh, important industrial automation systems is on the rise. And as we've already mentioned, we're here today to announce some cool stuff happening in 2020. The Belden Tripwire and Clarity brands have amassed an amazing customer race uh, who have driven our solutions to be best in class. Just a small percentage of them are highlighted here. We're engaged with leading technology partners and have recognized cybersecurity and compliance solutions. So at Tripwire, we have a broad solutions offering. In my opinion, what makes our industrial cybersecurity solutions unique is our vast data collection methods that we can use to gain the necessary visibility into your IIoT devices and your industrial networks as a whole. We can lump these data collection methods into three categories. First is active, uh, which in recent history has been kind of a controversial method to collecting data in industrial networks because we have to actually interact with the device. Uh, using either its native industrial protocol or a native IT protocol like SNMP. Uh, we can use uh, solutions that can issue commands to gather uh, configuration data. We can scrape web interfaces to pull back uh, interesting attributes about a device. And on traditional file systems, we can even deploy an agent. Um, these Active solutions are very targeted and very specific to the device we're communicating with. So uh, the willingness to employ active uh, functionality in industrial networks is uh, improving slightly. Uh, but that being said, um, it's uh, probably more common to leverage passive data collection methodologies in industrial networks. Uh, because we don't need to generate any traffic. Uh, we can passively listen uh, to our networks by uh, configuring span ports or switch port analyzers on managed switches or, or mirroring technology is another, terminal, another term for that, as well as uh, tapping into networks to perform deep packet inspection on that copy of network traffic. And the third capability is hybrid, whereby we interact with applications that already have the data we need, kind of like a middleman. Uh, whether you have an asset management solution that contains a holistic asset inventory uh, or leverage uh, third-party uh, driver solutions to facilitate communications between IT systems and OT networks. And lastly, we can consume uh, controller project files to glean tons of useful information about assets within the environment. Most importantly, when properly deployed and configured, all of these data collection methods can be completely non-intrusive to the industrial process. Ultimately, turning the data that we collect into actionable information is our strong suit. It makes it easy to know exactly what's in your environment. Again, no matter what your technology stack consists of, and uh, give you clear insight on how to secure it. For today, we'll be focusing on the passive capabilities of Tripwire Industrial Visibility, but you should know that uh, it and other Tripwire solutions for that matter have active discovery and query as well as hybrid functionality. Before I jump into what's coming soon with Tripwire Industrial Visibility, for those of you that may be new to the product, I thought I'd do just a brief introduction. First and foremost, Tripwire Industrial Visibility, TIV for short, excels at passive asset discovery through the use of ICS protocol dissection. TIV has the ability to perform deep packet inspection on more than 90 industrial protocols at an extremely granular level, so much so that the tool uh, can detect changes to your automation controllers as configs are remotely modified completely passively without introducing any traffic to your network. 
Because the solution is able to glean so much information about all your assets, we can automate vulnerability assessments without the need for intrusive vulnerability detection scanners. With both signature-based and network-based policy and zoning functionality, TIV detects threats at the onset by identifying changes to normal behavior. Tripwire Industrial Visibility also comes with a lightweight security information and event management solution acting as a cybersecurity event historian of sorts, doing reporting, alarming, facilitating trending information, and correlating interesting operational or security events for that matter. Ultimately, knowing what actions need to be performed to actually secure your environment is of utmost importance. Tripwire Industrial Visibility can provide a security posture assessment that works to assess your cybersecurity hygiene, best practices, identify weaknesses, and summarize the state of affairs in your environment. This can act as a punch list, guiding you through rectifying the most critical cybersecurity posture deficiencies in your environment in a prioritized manner. TIV can be architected in many ways. Here is just one sample deployment at a facility containing two disparate plants with a desire to aggregate data at an enterprise level. Through the use of strategically selected managed switches, we can take advantage of port mirroring capabilities to take a copy of network traffic, again, non-intrusively, and pass it off to Tripwire Industrial Visibility for inspection. As you can see here, TIV has the ability to monitor your environment at all levels of the Purdue model. So now on to the new fun stuff. Uh, soon to be available on the Tripwire Customer Center for download is Tripwire Industrial Visibility 4.x. I'd uh, encourage existing customers to reach out to your account team so that we can guide you through the upgrade process. Uh, but new to uh, Tripwire Industrial Visibility, namely, uh, is the cloud functionality, uh, whereby automatic threat intelligence updates can be uh, push down to your consoles uh, so that they're made available to you just as soon as they're developed, uh, as well as leveraging a functionality that we're calling Wisdom of the Cloud. Uh, through the use of, of uh, policy zones, uh, we can enhance uh, or enrich those rules to include reputation scoring uh, among other customers and sites. So there's a screenshot where you can see that cloud reputation here by a policy rule on that second to the right column. Uh, second, uh, we've got a new and improved user interface with brand new beautiful dashboarding uh, along with an improved look and feel throughout the solution. Uh, here you can see uh, the new dashboards separated into four uh, independent sections. Uh, each one contains analytics that are relevant to the specific category. Uh, they are threat detection, risks and vulnerabilities, visibility, and OT asset inventory. And all of these widgets are uh, clickable, allowing you to further drill down into that data. Uh, there's a new asset view, um, and it's uh, really a fantastic uh, improvement to the asset page, allowing for more of a, an analytics-driven flow uh, with uh, more easily uh, exposed components of each asset uh, to facilitate the exploration. Um, the new asset page contains new tabs, and uh, when each tab is, is presenting a way to explore the asset further, those tabs are device information, risks and vulnerabilities, threat detection, network analytics, and communication. Uh, lastly, an exciting feature uh, is the new granular risk uh, mechanism, whereby uh, at the asset level, based on an asset's vulnerabilities through the use of uh, CVE matching against model and vendor, uh, insights, alerts, and asset criticality and network locations uh, are how we make up that uh, this new granular risk scoring mechanism. We also can do that uh, at the zone level based on uh, protocols being used and whether they're risky uh, or used for discovery or flat out uh, insecure. 
Um, the, in addition to that, uh, an assets, the assets uh, within that zone, their criticality is, can affect the, the zone risk. Um, and the number of zones communicating with a particular zone can also impact its rating. Lastly, um, the hygiene score uh, is impacted by uh, these, both the zone and asset risks holistically. So the more zones you have at a higher risk, the hygiene score will decrease. Uh, and this is, of course, an average uh, of the zone risk. Uh, so here we can see a um, spider web chart on the left-hand side of a, a risk level along with all of those attributes that make up the zone risk. Well, Gary and I have done a lot of talking up to this point, so I will take this opportunity to turn it over to Yen. Thank you, Robert. So I will talk some more about what's coming in 2020. As Robert mentioned, Belden announced tripwide acquisition in 2014, and now in 2020, we have made it a long way. I'm very excited. We're launching a new industrial product, Tripwire Industrial Appliance. It is a threat management and asset visibility appliance. It comes in different specifications and suitable for various deployment sizes. Thanks from users on Tripwire Industrial Visibility is sometimes they have to purchase additional hardware to deploy, and Tripwire Industrial Appliance is our answer to those feedbacks. It is a one-box solution with preloaded Tripwire Industrial Visibility and soon will be secured with Tripwire proprietary device management software to provide threat management and asset visibility. As I mentioned in the previous slide, there will be multiple appliances available for different deployment sizes. There will be a high bandwidth appliance intended for asset visibility and threat management for large industrial networks and a fully recognized hardware for harsh environment deployment. And another key benefit of this product is ease of employment. There will be no additional pro procurement or integration required. You know, Hien, before you get started, I just want to, uh, you know, really reiterate uh, one point that you made here, and that is, you know, time and time again at customer sites, we're finding that uh, for those that have yet to implement any kind of virtualization at the plant, uh, it's very difficult to have to procure uh, hardware solutions from a third party, and then uh, deploy the Tripwire Industrial Visibility software on them, and then you know maintain hardware warranty and software support uh, separately. So this is a, a fantastic solution uh, that you're presenting to our customers here, and I can tell you uh, we'll have many folks that are excited to to bring these these devices into their networks. Thank you, Robert. And I'm excited to. So let's dive into the available hardware. There will be two appliances available this year. It is um, the first one is TIA 700B. It is a recognized beam rail hardware with wide operating temperature and substation compliance. It has fanless designed to increase durability. And the second one is TIA 2400B. It is a high-end one URAC server. It has a fan designed for self cooling high-performance CPU and RAM to support large industrial networks. Both of the appliances will come with preloaded in Tripwire industrial visibility. In terms of performance, TIA 700V has a throughput of 50 to 100 MPBS, and TIA 2400V has throughput of 300 to 500 MPBS. Of course, this varies based on the amount of traffic goes through users' OT networks, and our recommendation for deployment for these appliances is for TIA 700 c it should be deployed as a center to pick up all the local traffic within a certain zone or region of the environment and send it up to the main control. It can support some of the harshest industrial envir environments like substation. For TIA 2400 c it can be deployed as a large tripwire industrial stability server Collecting the range of information from the network traffic it is connected to and the number of sensors deployed at lower levels in the environment. It's best, it is best deployed in a climate-controlled portion of the environment, such as a data closet or control center. 
In addition to the features available at launch, we have some exciting features coming soon in future releases. The first one is hardware bypass. When there is failure, the packet will be transferred directly through the device, ensure no packet loss. Bump in the wire deployment. Make sure that the appliance can be inserted in the system. It doesn't require port mirroring or extra network infrastructure to function. And as I mentioned before, the device will soon be secured by a proprietary OS device management software. You can see in the screenshot, there will be a dashboard with consolidated summary of the device with all of the information like how it has been used, where it's located, uptime, and etc. There will also be port status and network parameters so you can look at. What I like the most about this is the virtual, virtual front panel. It provides remote control of the ports. And of course, there will also be a configuration page where you can configure your network and future features like firewall and secure remote access. Together with that, there will be a setting page where you can manage your password and other features like export, import configuration, so you can apply the same configuration throughout your network. To give more flavors on appliance deployment, I will briefly walk you through an energy and utility network reference. We have here a typical energy and utility network reference with remote power plants and substations, which is connected to a control center. So in this TIA 700C, can be deployed as a sensor in, um, in the substations or power plants. It will collect all the local traffic within the substations or power plants and get it up to the main console. TIA 2400C will sit in the climate control workstations in control center. And again, as I said before, it will collect a range of information from the network traffic it is connected to and the number of TIA 700C centers deployed in those remote substations or power plants. And with that, I will just hand it over back to Robert. Thanks a lot, Jen. I can tell you I'm excited to get my hands on one of those uh, orange TIA 700Bs. Uh, once again, thanks uh, both Gary and Hien uh, and our audience for joining us today. Uh, if there's any questions, we'll review uh, the chat logs now and field them if, uh, if we can. So stick around. All right, it looks like there's uh, just a handful of questions here. And um, the first one is, and, and Gary, if I think you'd be best to field this, is um, why do we need different tools for this? Can't we use traditional IT type tools? Hey, yeah, I can definitely talk a little bit to that one. So when I was speaking in my section earlier about some of the differences between IT and OT, those are some key things to think about when we think about deployment. You know, if you remember, I was talking about how the uh, concerns that we have are a lot different and the risk of something happening is a lot different. But on the other side of that, the equipment layout is also a lot different. On the IT side, where you have very Standardized equipment, you know, everybody is pretty much standardized on Windows. If you're going to get a, you know, authentication system, you're probably going to go get Active Directory. You know, all that is kind of uh, broken down over the years into the same type of solutions. On the OT side, it's not at all like that. Everything is incredibly fragmented. Every single solution vendor has their own solutions for all this different sort of stuff. And you have equipment that is never seen in the IT world. For instance, the controllers that actually run this equipment are not running on Windows or Linux or anything you know, that you're used to. It's running on a specific system, and that's different for each vendor. So Rockwell does it differently than Siemens, which does it differently than Schneider Electric, all the way down the line. So if we were to take a traditional IT tool and put it in this space, it wouldn't actually operate correctly because it doesn't understand how to uh, see the traffic from these equi this equipment and uh, understand what it's doing. The other key thing there is that it's also, we can't do things that you do in traditional IT more frequently, like just actively querying everything. You know, most of this equipment's older. It doesn't necessarily respond to things like SNMP or, you know, WMI. We can't go through agents on controllers like you would traditionally do in an IT environment. 
the landscape's very different. And uh, the final thing I'll say on this is that also the the focus is very different because on the OT side, availability is the number one thing. No matter what your security solution is, you have to ensure the availability of the site. And we never want to take down a production facility because of a security solution we put in place. So all of those kind of, you know, talk a little bit to the uh, to the differences and why we have a, uh, you know, kind of different landscape and uh, different requirements for tools. Thanks, Gary. I think uh, components of your answer are a perfect segue into the next question. Uh, you know, the the complexities of these environments to, in, in the the uh, the person asking this question's mind lead them to believe that you know the deployment uh, time for this solution could be extended. Can you comment on what a typical deployment timeframe looks like? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the initial deployment is usually very quick. You know, just to get some presence and some visibility, it can be as simple as just a single switch config change. You know, in general, we we're talking a little bit about how it gets data, but if we're going in passive only, you can just reconfigure a few switches to send span data to uh, the TIV appliance, and then you'll immediately start getting visibility. That part is very quick. Um, going in and getting a good, uh, uh, so the initial footprint is, is very, very fast to achieve. Um, to get a full-blown installation, you know, have all the tuning done, get a good baseline of all the uh, everything that's in the existing system, all that sort of stuff. It really depends on the plant and what a regular cycle looks like. You know, in general, you want to see enough for what, uh, you know, what normal looks like so we can use that for our anomaly detection to identify what abnormal looks like. So, you know, our rule of thumb is usually a few weeks for that kind of burn-in period and tuning period. But again, it depends on the installation. So if I'm in a very small lab environment that doesn't have very much equipment and is very well known, it could be a day, you know, maybe even a couple hours. Um, whereas very, very large complex environments could take a little bit longer. But um, again, the immediate value, the immediate visibility is very quick. You know, I, I can come to a site, have it stood up and be giving you visibility into your system within hours of arriving on a site. So, um, that gives a little bit of information there. You know, in my personal experience, Gary, it definitely aligns with those statements. The initial deployment can be very quick and the mean time to value is equally short. Um, on, on to the next question. Can you talk just a little bit more about the new cloud update functionality and perhaps uh, mention anything that's being done to uh, ensure that uh, all aspects of security implications have been uh, thought, thoroughly thought through. Yeah, definitely. So the cloud update uh, is a new feature that we have coming out that's intended to give you a couple of things. One is it gives us updates. <laughs> you know, fancy that. So it allows us to do immediate updates for things like new vulnerabilities. So uh, Clarity and Tripwire both do vulnerability research. We, uh, you know, try and are on the cutting edge of new attacks and things like that in the environment. By giving you a, a cloud update feature, you can actually get those updates out immediately. So you're not waiting for a patch and having to go do that all manually. It can be updated on a constant basis. So that's for vulnerability and threat information. It can also update with signature information. So if we have uh, new YAR rules, new SNORT rules, things like that, those can get pu pushed straight down to the system. So if a new IT attack comes out, that can be immediately placed and uh, actualized on the system. One of the other big things that we're doing now is uh, with the cloud update feature, we're trying to uh, add some wisdom of the cloud. So uh, one of the things we do with the system is we identify data pathways within your environment. So, you know, which groups of assets speak with which other groups of assets and what communication protocols they use. And we use that to create a normalized behavior uh, uh, within the environment. Through the cloud update feature, we're gonna start capturing that data so that we can tell you, is your environment normal? You know, we'll have a very large uh, fleet of sites that we can start pulling data from. And if you are the, you know, only person in the electrical utility space across thousands of installs, 
with these type of systems that has this type of communication profile, that's pretty abnormal and that's something that we'd want to go investigate and figure out why that's going on. So that's some of the big benefits that we think we're going to be getting with that feature. On the trips, on the uh, flip side of that question, um, how are we securing this? So all of the communication is done securely. You know, everything's uh, being encrypted and anonymized to ensure that none of the data is visible uh, to anybody that's snooping the network or anything like that. It's all being done in secure tunnel communication. So we don't have to worry about anybody snooping on that traffic. It's also designed to only be done from that central place. In general, your your uh, your site components are not in an area where they're going to have a readily available internet access because you know, generally within the OT network you don't have internet access. But from the enterprise man the uh, management console where all of our various CIVs come and talk to our central solution, that is generally in an area of the network where it can get out. And so that's kind of how the design is. The other thing that I will say is for our anonymization of data, we built the system to the uh, European Union standards on anonymizing user data to ensure that no identifiable information is uh, being sent up. So nothing like IP addresses, asset names, any of that sort of stuff, none, nothing that can be attributed back to a customer is actually uh, being sent up to the cloud. It is strictly anonymized data that is just being viewed in aggregates to uh, you know, bring this value back to the customers. That's a little bit what the feature is and, and kind of some of the security and ideas that we've wrapped around it to uh, ensure that users are getting value but aren't uh, you know, opening themselves up to any additional risk or uh, you know, giving out any information that they wouldn't want to about their site. Awesome, Gary. Thanks for that. I, for one, am really looking forward to seeing this functionality employed uh, at our customer sites. Uh, that wraps it up for today. Um, actually, there might be one more. Um, Gary, there's a follow-up question here in uh, how do you stay ahead of threats and attacks? Yeah, so that really comes from our research. So we do have, uh, you know, the I spoke a little bit about baselining and trying to understand what's normal at the site. So when we create that baseline within a site, that gives us protection against day zero type of threats because we create a very, very detailed model of what exists, what is normal within the site. And if something changes, so, if, you know, some new attack vector comes in that we've never seen before, in order to actually do something in the environment, you'd have to change something. You, know, you have to change some amount of communication so that you know, behavior has changed within the environment. So that's one of the main ways that we do it is we create this behavioral model and then use that to look for new, you know, like the day zero type stuff. Um, on top of that, we also do uh, threat research and analysis constantly. So we have a big team of researchers that are doing this all day. Uh, Clarity actually publishes our own CDEs now specifically on OT equipment. You know, it, it, we're looking specifically for attacks in this environment. So, you know, a good example is uh, we just had the Trident malware attack, and I actually spoke to it in my slides. And that's something we actually worked with at Schneider Electric uh, to remedy, to identify, and to uh, respond. Uh, so this is something, you know, we're, we're on the cutting edge of this sort of stuff, and once we get into the cloud update feature, we'll be able to push the signatures that we create for that sort of stuff, the vulnerability information that we create for that sort of stuff, down directly to our customers in real time. Um, but again, even if we have some day zero type situation, the system is designed to be able to identify that through its behavioral model. Very cool stuff, Gary. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us uh, and Hien as well. Uh, and even more so to our audience, thanks for spending uh, some time with us this morning. Um, if you have any further questions, you know, all of us are readily available and you can find us through uh, the traditional social media means or even through uh, Tripwire directly. So have a great uh, rest of your day and we hope to see you again soon. Bye.